Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. Wife cheated after 13 years together. To provide some context, my wife, 28 female, and I, 28 male, have been married for 13 years. We began dating at the age of 16, never split up, and married three years ago. We had the type of connection that others envied, and everyone expected us to marry when we were younger. Things began to change between us around a year and a half to two years ago. Some troubles with her family arose, and she began to get more aloof, both emotionally and physically, became very possessive of her phone, and got increasingly close to a male colleague. Long story short, I snooped. Yeah, I realized this is horrible on her phone, since I had a suspicion something was going on based on a number of things and discovered messages proving her affair with this person. When I confronted her in early September, she said it had been going on for a year. They were having an affair in our house, sleeping together in the bedroom that would someday house our future children. She apologized and promised it would never happen again, and I informed her that in order for us to go on, she couldn't have any contact with the person with whom she cheated on me. They are still communicating on occasion two months later, with her claiming that it is unreasonable of me to expect her not to speak to someone she considers a close friend. I'm at a loss on what to do at this point. I'm trying to see if I can go on, but I'm afraid I'll never be able to trust her again. I believe her decision to stay in contact with him demonstrates that she prioritizes their relationship above ours. I'm simply completely conflicted with what my instinct is telling me. She also warned me not to inform any of our friends about what was going on so I don't have anybody to speak to. Sorry for the rant, but this is the first time I've written it all out, and I honestly don't know how to continue or manage with this. Edit. I wasn't anticipating such a strong response, with the exception of a few of you who appear to believe that harsh responses are okay when someone's whole life is crumbling around them. This was useful. I know what I need to do. All I need to do is pull off the band-aid and get started. I'm going to contact the lawyer I chatted with a few weeks ago tomorrow and see how he advises me to handle the problem. Story 2. He was cheating on me our entire marriage. It's over and I'm devastated. My spouse, 32 years old, and I, 34 years old, have been married for nearly six years. I realized he had been with individuals he knew in person on Facebook the night after we got engaged. His prior relationship had been significantly more liberal and non-monogamous, so I made it clear that this was not acceptable to me. This was unethical. I'd leave him if he did it again. He did it again, of course. A few years later, he woke me up in the middle of the night to inform me he'd been doing it again. To be honest, I was relieved since. I assumed he'd been doing it the entire time. As a result, we sought therapy. Not even six months later, a buddy told me that my husband had been flirting with his wife on Snapchat. Both participants stated that it was only one drunken night. I had been working my tail off for two years to complete school so that we could spend a year or two in Japan. It was something we had been working towards and something I had always wanted to do. We were really just a few months away from achieving that objective, so I wasn't about to let him take it away from me. Those emotions were hidden deep inside me. These acts of adultery made me feel unwelcome, and I often blamed myself. They annihilated my feeling of self-worth. Our life was often distant, sometimes bordering on dead bedroom territory, but it was never an issue he genuinely sought to improve on. I sought individual therapy, believing it was possible that it was my fault. I got an IUD because I thought my hormones were out of whack. It was because I felt so unwanted and untrusting that the emotional connection wasn't there, and thus I never considered. When we returned from Japan, we had a difficult year, but things gradually improved. However, I began to feel dissatisfied. We had a major come-to-Jesus conversation about our relationship in which we discussed our emotions, what we were going to do to salvage our marriage, and recommitted to one other. We eventually began having and reconnecting as a couple. That was really wonderful, but it felt like it was chewing at me. I had asked him directly whether monogamy was okay. He agreed. I asked him whether the cases of cheating that I was aware of were the only ones. He agreed. Surprise, surprise, he's a liar. I'm not proud of it, 
but I snooped on his computer after seven years of worrying about it. What I discovered was much more than I could have expected. He was other females the whole time he was cheating on me. When I confronted him with the facts, he admitted that he never cheated on me since that isn't cheating. To him, even though I told him that is to me, very clearly, he admitted to being handsy with a female in my house in my bed, but since he didn't go all the way, I suppose it isn't cheating. It's all over. I'm going to file for divorce. I feel like I'm crumbling. Story 3. She told me tonight that she cheated back in March. Me, a 28-year-old male, and her, a 27-year-old female, married four years ago in May and have been together for around 4.5 years. No children, two pets, and shared ownership of a mortgaged home. Tonight, my wife and I had a discussion that was a follow-up to one we had a few weeks ago, in which I informed her that I'd been battling for along with emotions of not having my needs satisfied. That talk had gone well, and we had decided to go to work on it. Tonight, she claimed she'd been thinking about it and that she simply doesn't believe she can offer me what I need. We both vowed when we married that the D-word would never be in our vocabulary. We're both Christian and sincerely believed in practicing the God-instructed methods of being married. But she said she believes we both deserve to be happy in this life because we're both young and clearly unhappy now. We'd previously attended an employee assistance program counselor, but I understood that wasn't the in-depth level of marital therapy we clearly now need, and I indicated as much, adding that we should first attempt actual counseling like that to ensure we really feel the way we believe we do. She's been seeing a therapist on her own for issues related to her mother's abandonment and neglect, and I can't remember the details of the conversation because this is where it happened, but she brought up her counseling and said, Back in March, I was feeling something and I slept with another guy. That night, I told you I was going bowling with a coworker from the next town up from ours, but instead I went to visit him. It was a blunder. She continued with the original topic of the discussion for a while as I buried my face in my hands, attempting to process what I had just heard. It was as though she was oblivious to the fact that she had cheated. You cheated on me, I said, she agreed. Did you have with another man? I asked, she agreed. I inquired who, and she replied it was a gentleman she knew from her hometown. She had been chatting to him for a couple of weeks before making the preparations and going up. When she insisted it was a mistake again, I became enraged. Do not claim it was a mistake, I yelled, you lied to me. You were well aware of what you were doing. She was stunned, so I told her, I won't be here tonight. And I grabbed my keys and went to my closest friends. I called him my brother place where I've remained since, riding the waves of emotions that wear head over me and trying to make sense of it all. She became pregnant in August and miscarried in October. I was so shocked with rage that I instantly feared the kid wasn't mine, but she stated she used a condom and had periods afterwards, and I quickly questioned the fact that she was only eight weeks pregnant when she miscarried. All of this to say, we've gone through the trauma of it as well. We did, however, celebrate her pregnancy after she had cheated. She lived that lie with me. Please accept my apologies for the lengthy digression. Right now, all I need is some guidance through these early phases of trauma and how to manage my emotions. Edit. I've often wondered what it would be like to create one of these revisions that said, wow, this really blew up. But, in fact, it did. It's becoming overwhelming to attempt to respond with everyone's responses, but please know that I'm reading everything and appreciate the heck out of everything. I'm now waiting at the doctor's office for SDD testing. Lawyer appointments are scheduled for the remainder of the week. Therapy is arranged for this Friday as soon as possible. When she gets home tonight, she'll learn that I should not have been the one to leave the house last night and that she may pack her belongings and go for the time being. And it doesn't matter where, it's not my concern right now.